Yo, what's going on, y'all? You're tuning in to another exciting episode of the Mario Ramon recap of the haves and the have-nots. And this show is entitled Brilliant Lawyers Lurking. Okay? Now, um, I have a co co-host today. It is this paper towel because I have that flu thing going around. Oh, my God. There's nothing I can do. I'm wheezing. I'm like, whew. But I'm going to get through this recap because this is our job and we have to do it. Okay? Now, um, this show started out with Candace, her house, the body, the police. They found the freaking body. Oh, my God. I had the chills and then I didn't have them anymore. I just couldn't take it. I was like, give me my damn night clothes so I can watch this and black out. Like, it's just too much right now at this point. Okay, so the police found her hand, and then they just start digging, digging, digging. And so as soon as um, they were digging, you know Jeffrey's boyfriend had to call him. And he was, like, um, talking to him in, like, that old Harriet Tubman language. You know how when you... Harriet was talking to the slaves, and she was like, meet me on the other side of the river. But Master was standing right there and didn't have a freaking clue. Harriet was like... Grr, grr. And then they all just start saying, me, me, on the other side of the river. Me, me, on the other side of the river. That meant me, me, on the other side of the river at 8 o'clock, okay? So, Jeffrey's boyfriend was kind of speaking Harriet Tubman language to Jeffrey. He was like, mm-hmm, yeah, baby, um, we found a body. I'm going to need your ass <laughs> to get in that hotel room that we always do our nasty stuff in, and I'm going to fuck you up. All right, I'll see you in two hours. Yeah, I'm fucking you up. Okay, all right, mm-hmm. Yeah, oh, bring your little black bitch girlfriend too, Candace. I can't wait to see you. Okay, bye-bye. Putting me in a predicament like this. Oh, my God, fucking you both up. Okay, so they found a body, which I just thought, like, I was going to lose all my hair, but then I was like, well, shit. I don't have any hair, so I'm to the good. I just thought I was going to lose my hair when they found the body. I couldn't believe they found the body. Yeah. Even though we saw the, the grave protruding out of the ground like that for like two weeks, I just, I, you know, I thought that was what we were doing, you know. We, we were, you know, acting like we went to Stevie Wonder University for investigations and don't nobody see this protruding grave. We should have been found the body. But you ain't heard it from me. So, um, let's go. Two things. I think Tyler Perry is being very savvy. He's using one actress for the price of two or two actresses for the price of one. Whatever. I think Hannah and Quita are the same people. Is Hannah and Quita the same person? I don't know. They have the same hair. Well, maybe they have the same wig. But I almost blacked out when Hannah was in that hotel room. And she had that braid wrapped around that Princess Leia braid from Star Wars. They didn't pick up and wrapped around her I Oh, y'all gonna make me <coughs> hit my damn head and black out. I'm gonna sue your ass. <coughs> Fuck you up. But I can't take it. Hannah and that baby. And, um, it, Hannah, the baby, and, um, her son. Now they're living in the gas station bathroom. It's just so sad. I don't know, ain't no privacy. They better get some, uh, not little, um, some sheets and put them up on the wall like little dividers. I don't know how we gonna break this room up. But three people can't sleep in this little, this little room. It's just so sad for my heart to see. And you know that once Candace gets word that they are in a gas station bathroom, all three of them living, it's gonna, she's gonna go ballistic. Speaking of Candace. Candace and Jeffrey was summoned by the mighty Veronica. She was like, you two get your little asses in this hotel lobby so I can talk to you the way you need to be talked to with this good ass wig I have on. Veronica's hair looked exceptionally well. I think this was the best hair she's ever had for all of the seasons. Veronica's hair came from her roots. I don't know if they used that Janet Jackson spray that they gave her in Black Cat. You know that Black Cat spray? So you could do Black Cat. Uh, da, 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 and the hair getting in your face like that. Veronica's hair gave it to me the way I like it. In fact, her hair had its own social security number, this, this show. So, Veronica was killing two birds with one stone, though. She said, you guys, you sit your little asses in that lobby and let me deal with this bitch, Erica. 
So Veronica bought these pretty little pink roses and she brought them and she set them on the hotel thing. And then she told the hotel lady, mm-hmm, look in your computer system and see if there's someone here's named Erica before, before I bash your head in this goddamn monitor. And that she, that's why she's a good lawyer because she can smile and shank you and twist it at the same time. Did you enjoy that? In a low tone voice. Love Veronica. Love Veronica. And that bitch was clean. Did you see her outfit? Oh, the bitch was Mommy Dearest clean tonight. Oh my God. Even though I, I can't even breathe. And, and you got me excited, Veronica. Oh my God. So yeah, the purse, the whole outfit, the hair, even I wanted some tonight. It was just, it was good. It was, it was so good. And you better be glad David didn't see her tonight because, but anyway, anybody that touches David or touches her son, she kills. This bitch is right or die. She's not playing. So, um, anyway, she set the little girl up, honey, um, Erica, so she can come to the hotel lobby and get the flowers. And so Veronica could, like, visually see who this little heifer is, talking to David and picking up his phone and calling him and shit. So, you know, Veronica, she, she, she will go to a Yoruba's priestess and put some voodoo roots on your ass, bitch. She'll cut your braid from your weave, honey, before they little, get that little hook um, needle in there. She'll cut that braid, give it to a voodoo priestess, and your ass will turn into a leaf. Don't fuck with Veronica. We love her. Okay, so what else we have? Um, it should have been called Hurricane Veronica because she was just looping around everybody. And poor Benny, he's acting like he doesn't have CNN talking to the police like that and screaming and fighting back. They go, shoot your ass. You better quit playing. You acting like you um white. You are light-skinned, Benny. You are not white. Candace, oh my goodness. When she pulled those coins out to give to Veronica as payment for her being her lawyer, she just don't have no more money, honey. She need to go in that gas station bathroom, too, with her family. It's so sad. They can't even borrow no money from Candace. Oh, my God. Y'all just want me to just black out. She, this bitch pulled out. I don't know if it was a dollar. I, it didn't sound like four quarters. It sounded like three quarters to me. But I think she really gave her, because Veronica said, listen, I'm not doing, I don't do shit for free, bitch. I don't even piss for free. I give myself five dollars and then I pee. So I don't even piss for free, honey. So I'm gonna need a dollar from you and a dollar from your poor ass. And I got Jeffrey if he don't have his. So where's your dollar, Candace? And this bitch pulled out 75 cents. I almost hit the floor like a wet dish rag. I almost hit the floor like a wet dish rag. Oh my god. Um Another thing I almost hit the floor like a wet dish rag is when Veronica was talking to Candace the way she needed to be talked to and she was talking about the threading to her um, couture wear. And that is true because when you do have like couture, there is a different stitching and the leather changes different colors and all this shit. So she was reading her and she was like, bitch, I bet you didn't even know that, honey. And I'm reading you like a book, honey, with my glasses at the tip of my nose, honey. I'm reading you, bitch. She read her. And not only did she read her, she read her for filth. It was a good old Mommy Dearest read when Mommy Dearest told Coca-Cola, don't fuck with me, fellas. I fuck guys bigger than you in Hollywood. Don't fuck with me. What I mean by that is Veronica, she looked at Candace. She said, honey, sit down before you mess up this these people, good marble. And what kind of shoes are those? She was like, bitch, they don't even sell them at Payless. Did you make them? And then she took, she took a deep breath. When Veronica took that deep breath, I could have unscrewed a theater chair and threw it at her ass. I just can't, I can't take the shade. It literally, dark in the house, too much shade. Way too much shade. Your price is way too high. You need to cut it. Now, Jim and Catherine, when they had their heart-to-heart -heart talk, Jim, he rang Catherine like a wet dish rag. He just rang her. He was like asking her question after question after question after question after question after question. And he's like, and that's why your ass is about to get convicted because you don't know what to say. And if you're fucking with Veronica, right, you can't cut your wrist and then go swimming in a school of piranhas, bitch. You will get devoured. 
That's what you're doing when you fucking with Veronica. Now, you might want to shoot this bitch in front of her and scare her and all that bullshit. But up here, Veronica is very swift. Even Quita knows that. Because when Veronica rolled up in Quita's hood, who the fuck rides up in your hood, grabs you by the neck, and slaps the fuck out of you? Veronica, go and sit down on it. Honey, Veronica's shadow doesn't even fuck with her after 4 p.m. Her shadow be like... Your price is way too high. You need to cut it. All right, so, and poor Wyatt, he is just driving down to the hood, honey, and that's what you get. You supposed to get your car taken from you. When you have a $450,000 car and you drive with the whole city is probably about $450, the whole city is worth $450, you're supposed to get car jacked. Two plus two is four, even when you're dealing with pesos, right? Water's wet. It's not damp. It's not moist. It's wet. That poor Wyatt. He ain't learned. He just got out of a goddamn coma. And he's fighting his drug dealer friend for some more drugs. I don't get it. Speaking of drugs, when I left the doctor, this bitch then wrote me a prescription for everything. Everything. I think she wrote me a prescription for, for some clear fingernail polish. I mean, everything you can imagine. I got a, a turkey bag. She wrote me a prescription for turkey bags. I felt like Anna Nicole when I left out of there. God bless Anna Nicole's soul. But I felt like Anna Nicole when I left the doctor's office. <laughs> and my voice still sounded like I've been on a vocal tour for four months. And this is my first day off. I still don't have my voice. It's all good. Well, listen, guys, I'm going to see you next time on the Mario Ramon recap for the haves and the have-nots. This is my worst. So, you know how when people say, um, I love it, this is just like my worst, but it's, I don't even know if it's my worst because I still love it. And I pray that I convey the energy and all the sparkle and all the, you know, the wittiness and all that, even though I can't breathe or think. But, you know, thank you so much for tuning in and definitely like the video and pass it off to your friends. And um, remember how they used to say Whitney Houston's worst is most people's best. Now, I'm not going to say that about me. I will just say this is me on a damn flu and I am just breathing through a straw and it's my worst. But I just pray that I I'm still gave my best. That is what I'm saying, all right? I love you guys so much. Big cyber hug, and I'll see you next time for the haves and the have not review. Um, and then, like I said, this one is entitled A Brilliant Lawyer's Lurking. Peace.